Okay, so I'm going to paint this room, and as you can see, I taped, and then I dropped some plastic down, put it down nice and loose. Okay, then I set everything in the middle of the room, and I covered it with plastic. Okay, I took all the plate covers off. I should always do that. Um, and then I'm not painting the trim here, but on the top, I'm going to caulk, and then I'm actually going to paint this just this top edge because I want to clean this up and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, so I sanded this down first. So I've sanded that, taken all the plates off, and covered everything up. So what I'm going to do now is start caulking. Now this video is just going to be me painting the entire room. It might be kind of long, so I'm just trying to experiment here. But I'm going to caulk all of these edges. So I want to clean this stuff up. So you can see I don't really like the way that this looks. So I'm going to clean that up. You don't have to. You could, you could tape to the outside of that and paint it, but I like to caulk it, then paint the edges, and then tape it up. I know it seems like a lot of work, but it just makes it look a lot better, and you'll see that as I move along here. So I'm just gonna start caulking the room. Can I always keep a wet rag with me, wipe my finger all the time. And you don't wanna pull a lot of the caulk out, right? You just wanna get it in there. And keep a nice rounded edge, right? Don't pull it all out. I've already done some of this, that's why I'm moving here. Okay, and you'll notice that I didn't just stop at the end here, I did both runs. This way it's easier to come down, scoop it out, and then move to the other side, okay? So don't worry if you don't feel like you're moving that fast. You know, I've been painting for a long time, so it's just, I do it all the time. So of course, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So, you know, if it's taking you a little bit of time, you know, you have to just do small areas at a time. Remember to always keep your finger clean. Okay. And I'm gonna actually run down this crack. I don't know if that's easy to see. And I'll just touch it up. As you can see, I need to get some tape in there. You also notice the way that I taped this. I just kind of rolled it up onto the trim since I'm not painting this face of the trim. I'm only doing the very top. So that's why I just roll it up. Here I'm going to go down a little bit farther because I, I want to paint that crack. Follow my own rule. Okay, I'm gonna go around the corner, and as you can see, there's a crack right here, so I'm gonna come up the wall a little bit. Clean that up. Okay, you can see there's a nice big crack here. All right, so the caulk is dry, and I am going to paint. I had to get this paint matched. I'm not sure exactly what this was. My guess is it's uh, it feels like a lacquer and oil-based spray. Um, but I would just want to paint the edges of this. And you can see that, well, it might be hard to see in the video, but it's, it's a little light there when they spray it. So I just want to cut it in, 
Okay, as with the uh, caulking, um, you, you want a wet, a wet rag. When I go to brush this, uh, I'm gonna get some probably on the outside here and I just wanna be able to wipe it off. Now again, you don't have to go through this caulking and painting edge thing. I think it looks better, but if you bypass it, that's just fine. Um, I'll put a note in here to skip ahead the time frame um, if you don't wanna watch me do this, okay? But here we go. So I bought Advance, I love their product. It's, it's called a hybrid paint. It's a, they call it a alkyd or an oil base suspended in water. So it goes on like a water, cleans like a water base, um, but it's supposed to dry to the durability of an oil. Okay, and you'll notice that I'm, I wanna slop it on the wall. Okay, oops, okay, there you go. Right, so it's pretty straightforward. And remember, a couple things when you're brushing. You never want to stay in one spot. Over, you don't want to. Over, that's called overbrushing, right? Just get on it, come down. You want to make sure that there's not too much or too little paint. I know people hate me saying that. Okay. Another thing too is you don't want the paint to to dry up on you, right? This has what's called a Pretty, well, it's not a long open time. Open time just is the amount of time you have before it actually starts to dry on you. This product is has a little bit longer open time. Now, I'm just painting this top part right here, and that's it. And then once all of this is dry, and this uh, takes a while to dry. This actually takes 16 hours to dry. So I will be waiting until tomorrow to tape it up. But if you use a, a different kind of latex paint, um, that usually dries in about four hours. Okay, now this is a tricky part here. Now, in this scenario, because the trim goes right to the wall, I'm actually gonna paint this entire piece, but I'm only gonna paint a, a small portion of that. Um, this, I don't wanna just do that, because I'm afraid that that will actually stick out too much. So instead of doing that, I'm just gonna run down the whole thing. Just the face. Okay. Now up here, Kind of cheating, I agree, but I, but just enough to cover the caulk. Okay. Now it, again, if you came back and you saw that that was just it was just too noticeable, then I would just paint all the way across. It only takes a couple seconds. Well, hopefully, it won't take too long. If you're worried about hitting your hinges here, you could just put a piece of blue tape or something on there. Okay, so I'm gonna paint the ceiling. I am using uh, Benjamin Moore's uh, ceiling paint, their waterborne ceiling paint. It's a fabulous product. It's gonna take a couple coats, but that's fine. Okay, so you'll notice that I've cut in around the smoke alarm, the light, and the, and the heat register. Um, I do not cut around the edge of the ceiling next to the wall yet. I do that very last. I actually finish painting the walls, and then I go back and cut in the ceiling line. Again, I have detailed videos on all of the specific things that I do. Um, so you can find that, but I'll, you'll see it uh, towards the end. Okay, so that's why I haven't done it. Now, uh, I've got a roller pad, this brand new uh, paint, and then you'll see that I line my pan. You could use a liner. Uh, again, I have a video on how to do that. So um, let's get to it. Okay, I don't have a brush in here with me, so. And you'll notice how far I'm filling it. If you have a brush, of course, you can do that. All right, I'm getting it nice and saturated. Now, 
And it will take a little while for the, the roller pad to soak up paint. So in the beginning, you're not going to get a lot of paint on the ceiling. So just move in smaller areas until you move along. Okay, and I'm just using a broom handle as my extender. This, as you can see, I get a ton of use at it. It's fantastic. And, and I can just hook the broom to it and double use. And again, I didn't tape up any of the trim yet because it's not ready to be taped up. But I feel confident rolling over the top of this because this paint doesn't spit. I mean, it may spit a little bit, but it, it doesn't spit like some paints do. And those paints usually spit because they're they're made of more water. This has a lot of solids in it. So. Actually, you're gonna know there's a good chance that the, if, it is, it, if it spits a little, which it will, then the, it'll come down on the camera. See, and you notice right now I'm not doing a big spot. You know, paint takes what it takes, unfortunately. You don't want to push it out. Again, I got detailed videos on the ceilings too. I just wanted to do, I thought this might be an interesting idea to just paint the whole room and show you what I do. And this is a pretty straightforward room. There's not a lot of problems with the room. The house isn't that old, trim's in good shape. They just want to change the colors. Okay, again, you'll notice I rolled in all kinds of different directions just because of the bed. Um, but it's a very forgiving paint. It's a, it's a great product. So I really, if you're gonna paint the ceiling, uh, unless it's a bathroom or a laundry room, even a laundry room, doesn't matter. I think it should all be just a true dead flat. It hides imperfections better. It doesn't, it won't sheen on you as much. Sometimes you'll see lap lines. These, you won't show as much. Right now, you might be able to see it. It might be, the wide angle may not help, but you can see a difference right now, but once it's all dry, it, you know, so don't ever think when you're, when you're painting and you think that something doesn't look quite right, put it on and allow it to dry, okay? Don't freak out because it looks weird, right? <laughs> okay, let it dry out, put your second coat on, it'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a trick 
with this. It's also in a more detailed video. So get your roller pad nice and saturated because I'm going to put another coat on this in probably about an hour. It's, it's drying. It's pretty warm today, so it's drying pretty fast. So what you want to do is take a piece of plastic. Okay, and lay it over the top. Okay, then what you want to do is get a rag and I have wet it down and I've wrung it out and then I'm just going to lay it over the top of this. All right, so the wet rag helps retain the moisture. It kind of creates this the plastic helps create a seal. And um, so the plastic and the wet rag create kind of a seal. So that would last. Now what you want to do, um, if you have to wait a long time between coats, like say a couple hours, you want to come back about every 15 or 20 minutes, pull it back, saturate it, because you want to keep this upper area nice and wet, right? If it starts to dry on you, you're going to get chunks in your paint. So roll it, put it in there, all right, come back and visit it often. All right, you don't want to do it too long. If you're, you have to wait four or five hours between coats, then I would recommend cleaning everything up. And starting over but I'm gonna be doing this pretty fast. It's drying really fast here today. It's very warm today. Okay Okay, so the trim is completely dry and now what I'm gonna do is tape it up now You could cut it in freehand, but this is just easier um, Cutting in especially if you haven't done a lot of it. It takes a lot of practice So I'd really recommend taping it besides it just creates a straighter line. It's just nice and clean now I'm using what's called a super safe release tape. This is uh, 3M's, it's called 2080, it's the delicate surface. I like to use low adhesion tapes. I don't like medium adhesions, no cloth tapes. Um, you could use frog tape, but I'm actually gonna seal this tape with paint. So I'm gonna tape it to the trim and I'm gonna bring it out. Again, I've got more detailed videos of this and you can see it better. But I leave a little bit of gap and then I'm gonna seal it with my trim paint, okay? Because what I'm trying to do is keep the new color from leaking behind the tape, right? We don't want the new blue to sneak behind the tape. And so to do that, I seal it. I just take it and do that. Now you could use frog tape. Um, I don't recommend it because it, it doesn't work in all applications, so um, but I'll leave that up to you. Most of the time when you use frog tape, especially when you get to situations like this, if you put the frog tape on like this, it, it will leak through. So, right. so I'm just gonna go around, tape it all. Again, I've got detailed, so I know this is kind of, it's kind of a weird shot since it's a wide angle, but I have videos, details on how this should be done. Okay, so I'm gonna go around the entire room and tape it all up and then seal it with my trim paint. And yeah, I'm trying to keep it as smooth as possible. Now, I know this is going to be hard to see, and again, so you should watch the detailed videos. I have two videos, one on doing vertical runs, and then the other on doing horizontal runs. I don't know how easy this is going to be to see right now, but I tape it differently. Okay, in this scenario, I come onto the trim away from the wall, and in this scenario, I actually tape it to the wall.
And the reason I like to use a low adhesion, super safe release tape, because you run a much less of a risk of pulling. Remember, I painted the edge of this yesterday, and there's if I use a medium adhesion or high adhesion tape, it could pull that paint back off. Now, you, I, I'm going to do a video soon about, uh, you've probably seen where you can caulk the tape to, to create the seal that I'm creating with the paint, but I have a few issues with that. Um, the caulk, you have to put it on, and then you have to paint it and pull it off right away. This, in this scenario, all you have to do is paint, and you just let this dry, right? Then you have all the time in the world. Anyway, I'll get into more detail when I do a, a video of my thoughts on that. I mean, I'm not saying that the process doesn't work, it works great, but you gotta be pretty proficient at it, you gotta move really fast. And you don't need a lot of paint in here, right? You're just trying to create a seal so that it will seal the tape. Okay, so the ceiling has been painted twice. I showed you rolling it the first time, I've rolled it again. So this middle area is all done, okay? All right, so I've cut in all, I've taped and cut in everything. You can see around the room. So everything's taped, everything's sealed. Um, the walls are in really, really good shape. I realize that you're probably, if you paint your own place, there's probably gonna be a lot of nicks and, and you need to fill all that stuff in. In this room, there's nothing. They didn't have anything hanging up, there's no holes anywhere. So I just get, I'm lucky enough that I can just paint the walls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start cutting in the ceiling, okay, with the wall paint. And I'll probably come down the corners too, but I won't do any of these areas, of course, until this is completely dry. Okay, so I'm grabbing my brush, and I use a Purdy XL Dale. I love these things. Again, I've got videos on purchasing a good brush. All right, and we are using this color is HC 145 from Benjamin Moore. It's called Van Cortland Blue, and I'm using Regal Select's eggshell on the walls. And the trim um, turned out to be glacier white but it was the formula was at 150%. So if you're curious about the color, that's what it is. Glacier white at 150% formula. Okay, now remember, uh, later on I'll show you what I do here, um, but when we paint the walls, what you wanna do is take the color all the way up and onto the ceiling. Okay, you don't, wanna, you don't have to be up here because we're going to create a little line on the, on the wall, not up here, but on the wall. So I need you to paint up into at least the corner, okay? And if you want, this could be a good place if you just wanted to practice cutting in. You know, if you just, if you want to become proficient at it in the future, it takes a lot of practice. So you could do that if you want to mess around with it. For me, again, I'm a big fan of taping. It's just, it looks nicer. It's, it's, in my opinion, it's faster. I know it seems like a lot of steps, but it's just, it's just in the scheme of things, when you have to do this, And you have to do it around all of the trip. Just tape it up. <laughs> it's just so much easier. Okay. 
And especially as a novice, if you haven't done a lot of painting in the past, it's just so much easier. tape up the plates. If you did, that's fine, but I cut around them because I don't want to get the roller pad too close to them. So I don't accidentally hit it. Right? Okay, so as you can see, I've cut in around the top, top of that and all that, and this is dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and start painting this. I'll just do a couple runs so that you can see it, and then we'll come back to do the rolling. See how fast we're moving on this. I realize the taping up in the ceiling is the ceiling of the tape is a little slow, but it'll be worth it. Trust me, it will be worth it. Again, I'll if I don't want to roll an area, I'll just brush it. It's too small of an area to fall. to the tape. Right. I mean you want to you want to hit like you don't want to do this, right? You want to make sure you get onto the tape. You want to make sure you cover that line that you've created. Okay, so the room is all cut in, and now I'm gonna roll. I'll just, I'll roll a couple walls, and um, and then I'll turn off the video. And I have to put two coats on everything, so uh, I probably won't film any of that, but I just wanna show you what I do during the rolling process. Okay, so I got my roller pan, frame all set up. And the, the pad is nice and saturated because I painted the bathroom, which is, just next door, the same color. So I'm just using, the, and I'm using the same uh, product. So I'm using uh, the Regal Select, it's eggshell. It's an eggshell finish for the walls. Okay, remember you never, I'm loaded up pretty heavy here, so I don't wanna start up there, right? I wanna start in the middle. It'll the excess paint off and then roll back into it, okay?
didn't cut around this. I should have cut around this with a brush. So it's pretty straightforward. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's starting to dry. That's the darker areas. Don't, you don't go back over that, right? You gotta cover it. It looks good, let it dry, let the paint do its thing. Sometimes I'll hire people and they'll freak out because the, they haven't painted before and because of all the variation in colors and they'll try to go back in and fix it. And that's, you gotta allow the paint to dry, okay? And on these larger walls, again, maintaining a wet edge is, you know, you want to move kind of fast, but don't freak out about it. These paints, again, these low and no VOC paints dry pretty fast, so do it, do an area. And you might hear a lot of things out there, like some painters will, they'll paint this whole section and then they'll come back and they'll roll straight down. Um, if you're using a really great paint, you won't need to do that. Just do your section and then move to the next section. And then I'll usually move back and forth. Instead of coming all the way down, I'll go here. It doesn't matter. You can see that this section is starting to draw already, so I don't want to go back into it. So if you mess up, I would, you know, if that was drying for like four or five minutes, I wouldn't go back into it. Just let it dry if you missed a spot. Or... If you're wondering, I'm using a three quarter inch nap here. I usually use half inch or three quarter, just depends.
you know, we don't leave big lips, right? On them. And they're not a bit. I've got enough in here. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this, and then I need to put a second coat on it. Okay, so the walls are done, and um, I would, if I were you, I would wait for the walls to completely dry. I'm trying to get out of this house today, so I'm going to go ahead and start cutting in my line. You can see this is completely dry, so it's the portion below that I'd rolled. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start taping to it. Um, and what I do, and I have a detailed video of this, of how I do this line, and I'm using a super safe release tape again, a low adhesion. This is Scotch, the 280, the delicate surface. It used to be, uh oh, <clears throat> it used to be blue in color with, with an orange inner core. But now they're selling this uh, purple one. I'm not sure. Anyway, works great. So if you watch the detail video, you can see how this is done close up. Okay, so I go around and I drop it down from the ceiling about an eighth of an inch. Okay, press it on there nice and tight. Now this is a textured wall, right? So you could use frog tape to do this, but it, it probably won't work very well. It works pretty good on smooth surfaces. I still recommend sealing the tape always, okay? So I've put the tape on the blue. So we're trying to protect the blue, so I wanna seal it with the blue, okay? So same idea with the trim. And then we will come back when this is dry and I'll paint the ceiling color into this area, okay? So I'm gonna go around the entire room and tape it up and do this, okay? Again, I have a detailed video on this if you wanna watch it, okay. All right, so uh, you can see that I've taped around the ceiling and I've sealed it, okay? Um, and in the interim, I put the plate covers back on and I pulled the tape on the ends here. So I don't know how easy it is to see with this wide angle lens. I had to do a little touch up on the trim. It, it, I'd really recommend that you pull the tape the next day. Again, I'm just pulling it sooner because I'm. it's Sunday and I'm trying to get out of here today. Um, but if the paint is super dry, it will, it, the tape will just pull easier. You, you won't get any sheeting. Sometimes you can get sheeting problems when you go to pull it. And this paint, because it's not quite dry, will sheet off. So you want to make sure that it's nice and solid and dry. So I'd really recommend waiting. But you can see with the... Um, and I'm not, again, with the wide angle, I don't know how well you can see it, but in my other videos where I do, I do a lot of close-up stuff so you can see it's really detailed stuff. So but it's just a really nice look. So what I'm about to do now, and which is the last thing before I actually pull the plastic, is I need to do a coat of the ceiling. Actually, I'm going to do two coats of the ceiling where I cut in the line here. Okay, so remember we put the safe release tape on. Sorry about the shadows. Uh, the blue tape to seal it. We're going to paint it this color. And when you paint it, you want to make sure that you come onto your tape about halfway, okay? So I'm just going to go all the way around the room like this. I will wait for this to dry, and then I'll do a second coat, and then I will pull the tape. 
Okay, so you want to do the second coat, of course, when the first coat is dry. And again, I'd really recommend waiting quite a while before you pull. So after the second coat, let that completely dry. Ideal, if you can wait till the next day, that's the best way to do it. You could put everything back and you could just pull your, um, you know, you can put the plates and stuff back and then pull all your tape the next day if you have the time to do that, okay? So I will be back when I have the second coat applied and it's all dry and I'm ready to pull the tape, okay? Okay, so I've cut around it twice and now I'm getting ready to pull the tape. So you can see basically everything is almost done. Just gotta pull the tape and clean up and I'll be done with this room. Now, this has probably been drying for about an hour. I, again, I know I should be, it should, I should lead by example, but you should wait longer for this to pull this. Okay, I'm just showing you because this is the last thing I need to do and it's, it's the end of the job, so I'm gonna go. So, but here's what it's gonna look like. And notice how I'm pulling it back over itself. You should always do that, right? So you want to be, you wait for it to completely dry. So this is what it looks like. Okay, so you pull all the tape off. Again, you should wait for this to completely dry. This is dry, but it's not really dry, right? So I would really recommend you wait for it to completely dry, preferably the next day. All right, I'm gonna pull all the tape. And then I'm going to uh, put everything back together and I'll just do a quick shot of what the room looks like when it's done, okay? We get a little leak up there, so I'll, go, I'll need to go up and fix that. And I'll just take a small brush. I don't know if you can see it in the corner with this wide angle lens, but corners are usually no trust. You see, it's another white spot there, so I need to touch that up. Okay, so you see it just leaves a nice transition line between the, the walls and the ceiling. I think it's a better look. I think it's better than a corner to corner look. Um, again, I've got more detailed videos on how to accomplish this so you can see it close up. Okay, okay so here you go. This is the end product. As you can see, nice clean lines around the ceiling. I think the tape provides a better line around all the trim. Baseboard looks good. You notice if you look down on top of the baseboard, you don't see any of the blue. That's why I roll the tape up onto the trim. And yeah, that's it. So uh, I think this room took me it took me about an hour to put the plastic down. Maybe not even that long, but let's call it an hour to put the plastic down and take the plates off. It took me about another hour to caulk it, to caulk all the edges. Um, it took me, say, another hour to prime that then another hour to tape and prime. So, you know, there's an, uh, half an hour each on the ceiling. So maybe six hours in total. Now I did this over the course of two days because you need to wait for things to dry, but it's about maybe six hours of labor. And um, I'm gonna assume that it'll probably take you guys a little bit longer, of course, because I, you know, I've been doing this a long time. So it's, I just, I get it. So um, anyway, so it's amazing what a little bit of paint can do to a room. It just makes a world of difference. I'll stand back here. That gives you, I'll do that, see if that helps.
So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you like my work, please consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, thanks a lot.